Now, the numbers for electric vehicles have come out, and BYD, for the fourth quarter of last year, has finally surpassed Tesla as the largest manufacturer of electric vehicles. Actually, BYD has been the largest manufacturer for some time, if you include hybrid, but not counting hybrid on purely electric vehicles. Fourth quarter of last year, we actually had BYD with uh, over half a million units and uh, Tesla just under half a million units, 480,000. The inevitable has occurred. BYD has surpassed Tesla to become the number one electric vehicle manufacturer, pure electric vehicle manufacturer. So what do we get? We get a, a tweet from Elon Musk. He says, Tesla is an AI robotics company that appears to many to be a car company. So, in other words, it's okay for Tesla to be not number one because this is not the main business of Tesla. In terms of uh, contribution to shareholder value or share price valuation, it's actually quite true because the largest contributor to share price value of Tesla is still AI. But I think most of the media are not looking at it the same way. And this is mainstream Western media. For example, CNBC headline, Musk once laughed off BYD as a threat. Now the Chinese giant has taken Tesla's EV crown. And Financial Times, Tesla overtaken by China's BYD as world's biggest EV producer. And BBC, China's BYD overtakes Tesla electric car sales in last quarter of 2023. The Guardian, China's BYD overtakes Tesla as top-selling electric car seller. I think despite what Elon Musk says about AI and uh, robotics, the media's focus is so much on BYD overtaking Tesla in the manufacturing of EVs has a macroeconomic reason, because I think what we have is in any society, in any country, the vehicles, the, the automotive industry is usually a very important contributor to the country's economy's strength and growth. Why? Because the automotive industry has a long supply chain and a long value chain, both up and downstream. You go from components, you go from after-sales service, you have maintenance, you have all kinds of tied businesses to it, even insurance. All these businesses combined into one complete supply chain makes a very big difference to whether or not a country's economy is doing well or not. And what this demonstrates is that in the Chinese case, there are complete supply chains already in terms of components, in terms of assembly, in terms of manufacturing, including robotics manufacturing, and uh, also the after-sales service network, and also the financial side of it in terms of car loans, in terms of insurance, and so on and so forth. So I think what we have is a situation in which the automotive sector is maturing in China. It increases the growth prospects of China's economy overall because China has also become the largest auto exporter in the world, surpassing now the previous dominant forces of Japan and Germany and Korea. For any supply chain to work, there has to be logistics, there has to be efficient infrastructure, there has to be very smooth transactional systems. So what we have is very, very sophisticated supply chain in China. And the industrial supply chain is probably the most complete in the world. One of the things that happened impacted by the Ukraine-Russia conflict is the movement of uh, some parts of the supply chain of German automakers out of Germany because of high cost of energy. When energy cost increases by many, many fold, you become ineffective, you become uncompetitive in terms of uh, global markets. 
So we have already seen a number of German manufacturers moving their component manufacturing out of Germany to other places, including to China. So what we have in China now is a complete industrial supply chain, a complete automotive supply chain, and up and downstream all covered very well. So this is another bright spot for China's economy for 2024 and going forward.